you know, Nehemiah 8 10 says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. And we know walking this Christian walk, you know, it, it's not it's not for punks. You know, at Department of Corrections, we're both retired yeah. from Department of Corrections, and we know just going in every morning. A lot of time we loved our job. You know? That was our calling, but the enemy would battle, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Our spiritual strength, uh, not only on the job, you know, the, the tough job that we had, but just ex externally. But one thing we were talking about is, and of course, when we go to the job, we want to walk in the strength of the Lord. You know, we want to walk in the power of the Lord. And the only way we could do that is through having the joy of the Lord. Because Nehemiah 8.10 says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting. We had our conversation. We, we talked about this a lot. I mean, for those that don't know, uh, Brother Don here, I mean, he was basically a local celebrity, you know, out, out there in California. Oh. A local celebrity in high there school go. and and in college, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, this guy had it all. I mean, <laughs> in high school, he was on the front of Sports Illustrated. In high school, on the front page of uh, on the on the cover of Sports Illustrated. You know, but I remember years later, you know, we started working together, and you know, everybody knew who Don Hare was. So we, me, and him are carpooling. And you said something, it was, it was, you know, just a blessing to know that you were a believer. But then you said at that time when all these great things were happening for you, I mean, you're living the dream, got the women chasing them, everything. But you were telling me yeah. that that was sometimes the most depressing time of your life. The most saddest time of your life was during that period. And... A lot of people probably can't, you know, comprehend that. Can you Absolutely. go in and elaborate on that? Absolutely. I, I think that, you know, for me, it's like, I think sometimes we forget that we can be our worst enemy. We do have an enemy. We had, we do have Satan who's active and out there and doing it, but the worst enemy is a lot of times ourselves, how we perceive life, how we perceive who we are, what our identity is, and whether we know what our identity is. And if we don't know what our identity is, then we don't know how to respond to that. So for me, I didn't understand my identity of who I was in Christ. And, and mind you that I felt the depression in the midst of all these blessings and all this goodness that was going on in my life. And, and you're talking about, you know, the popularity and, and things were happening for me as far as sports and being able to get uh, a scholarship and be the actual first scholarship that Sac State ever was given was given to me. And to look at what God was doing to bless, but in those moments, there was periods of sadness and depression. And a lot of that was rooted in me not knowing who I was in Jesus. And because I accepted Jesus when I was 14, 15 years old. So um, it's like when you don't understand the actual like power you have in Christ and you don't understand who you are in Christ, you don't understand um, the specialness you are and the unique, uniqueness you are because of Christ, it is easy to get swept up in today's society, no doubt, because there's so many things that people are being inundated with, so many different ideologies, so many different um movements of like identity and and all these different things that people are battling um and then you tap on social media and the extras that that brings um 
the inundatedness of information and the overload of information, the overload of of hearing people's issues and struggles and and that breeds a heaviness that brings depression. And for me, what brought it for me was um I just was confused about who I was. And so I was trying to operate the best that I knew how. I didn't understand what it was to be a believer. And so I was at the privy, basically opening myself up for pretty much the enemy, really. Because if I'm not understanding who I am, and I don't understand how I need to operate, then guess what's going to happen? The enemy's open to do what he does because I'm not even powerful enough to fight the good fight because I don't, I don't understand who I am in Christ. I don't understand that greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. I don't understand the fact that the word of God can be something I can use to fend off the enemy. I don't understand and know that because the word of God being in me, it gives me power to fight. And so me not being prepared and understanding these things, it opened me up for depression for sure. Depression to the point where I desired to even want to consider taking my life. Yeah, that's what I wanted to get to. You know, you came to a, a breaking point where you were like, you're ready to take your life out. So how'd that come about? I mean, what was the spiral? What was that process like, you know? Well, the spiral was, it was like, I like to call it the perfect storm. You got like, you got like, first of all, it's just me and my dad. He raised me. My mm -hmm. mom's not around. So all the things that come with that, all the uh, abandonment by your mom and understanding what that means. And then my, my dad being a part of a new relationship. And then that new relationship was coming to an end. And it brings, brings back all these memories about what happened with your mom. And so you go through that right. kind of spiral in your mind. And then on top of that, you get the popularity from what was happening on the football field where, you know, when I broke a state record, you know, you started getting all this attention that you weren't used to getting. Did you like, feel a lot of pressure? Did you feel a lot of pressure? Tons of pressure. Tons of pressure. How'd you cope with that? How'd you cope Especially, with that pressure? Brother, you find ways of, of dealing with pressure like, you you want to get rid of pressure the best way you know how, right? Look, so you dive deeper, dive deeper into what you're doing. Like you dive deeper into football, mm -hmm. or you dive deeper into chasing girls, or you mm -hmm. dive deeper into partying. But the thing about when you're diving deeper into something that doesn't give you anything in return, but a temporary, like fleshly, like something, right? Um it doesn't give you anything that's sustainable. That's what I mean. Like, so I was seeking after everything to deal with the pressure of, 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 of what I was going through, um, by diving into everything I could to try to absolve the pain, whether that, that, that's sex, that's, that's drinking, that's, um, chasing women, that's, diving deeper into football. But the thing I kept running into was that every time I dive deeper into all these other material things, what ended up happening was I would never feel peace. Mm. It would only be temporarily fleeting, feel good moments, right. but it never was the peace that, that surpasses all understanding. It was never the peace that, um, that really, you know, that is from God, right? Like there, there's, there's a true real peace that God gives you that 
nothing else can match. Surpass all understanding. God's our no, heart. I mean, nothing mind. else. That's nothing right. else can match, and you know it. That's right. But you start to go after all these different things, whether it's, you know, some people become workaholics, some people become sex addicts, some people become um, drug addicts. I mean, you 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 dive into whatever it is trying to look for a hope of what God is the only person that can give. Mm. And for some, it's like and for me, it's like. I was diving deeper into that, but never was getting that in return. Now, did and you come it, to a point where you actually attempted suicide? Yes, I did. Okay. I, I, I actually came to a point where I attempted to actually do it. Tell us about that. Tell us about that. Brother, I remember just getting in the car, driving, and uh, I was coming under, there's an over ramp. And then over ramp that takes you over kind of like by city college. And then there's a under ramp that's underneath it. That's right by the railroad yard. So I was on this, uh, this under ramp mm -hmm. and I kept coming around this corner and I would punch it and I kept building up the courage. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I did that about three or four times trying to convince myself of uh, this is the option that this is what we're gonna do how old were you at this time now how old were you brother i think at that time 17. and so this is at the the height of your this is at the career. height of everything the height of everything like the height of what you would believe is the greatest moment that you could think you could have i right. mean sports illustrated Sports Illustrated. All this. Um, your 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 you you got popularity within your school. Um, on the surface, you know, it's like you seem like, you know, you got good relationships. You you have friendships. You know, what I mean, you have a father that loves you. You you have all these things that are great, right? You're a believer. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a believer. Mm. But I was so inundated and i feel like i was so broken up and broken and i didn't know how to allow god to put the pieces together and so what do we do we we self-medicate or we self-diagnose by i'm gonna put my own life together right mm -hmm. like this is how i'm gonna do it and you do it through like i'm talking about you do it through either sex or you do it through um putting forth every effort into basically now we know it as idolatry now was like, there a, a significant event that brought along this desire that night to take yourself out you know it wasn't like a breakup of a girlfriend or it something. wasn't it wasn't a necessarily only a specific event it was i was tired of feeling the pressure I was tired of feeling the pressure of, of, in my mind, living out this, this life, feeling like I had to have, like, the, I, I think the main thing was the pressure of doing everything right. Like, I felt like I had to do things right football I, well, mainly in football basically. football and in life right i felt like that in life like because i so do you have anxiety before a football game like i gotta perform better than the last or did you have that type of anxiety no or, or were you i confident we more comfortable when you're on the field i think i think when i was on the field that's when i felt the most confidence and you felt love and you felt love by the yep. fans I felt love. I felt acceptance. Um, uh, everything that was going on on the outside, to me, with football, I felt like, man, this is like a release, right? Yeah. But, again, it's similar to kind of what we do with, with, with relationships. Mm -hmm. Like, 
It's a release, but it's a temporary release. It goes away after the football game, after the Friday night lights, after the crowds, after all that, you come back down to earth to reality. The reality of your situation, your reality of your loneliness, your reality of feeling abandoned, the reality of, of I feel like I have to be perfect, but I, 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 I know I am not perfect. And what does that mean when I'm not perfect? And the feelings that come with that, you know right. what I mean? Now, you said loneliness. Now, most people would say, man, you got everybody calling you, wanting to be around you, probably coming by your house all the time. Explain what do you mean by loneliness? How See, a lot of people don't understand that you can be lonely in a crowd of people. You can be lonely in a crowd of people because, number one. of friendly people. And, you know, not crowd just of friendly a crowd of people, people, but a crowd of friendly people. Number one. You know, like I go back to like identity. I man, I didn't know who I was. Like, I didn't know who I was in Jesus. But the bigger picture is that there is only one person who can take away that loneliness that I'm talking about. Like that that heart vacuum, that that heart mm -hmm. loneliness. Like it's like when God puts in in your heart to have a relationship with him any other relationship outside of that man it 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 suffices for a period but it never sustains the vacuum and the draw that's right that god is calling you mm -hmm. that's like a totally different thing you know what i mean that's totally mm -hmm. different it's like you know it's like when i was going through it and even after i wanted and tried to commit suicide, I went through a long period of still running from God. And I would seek these relationships and, and I'm talking about like friendship relationships and female relationships, but it never gave me the peace and it never filled the vacuum. The vacuum and the peace only got filled when my heart was like posturing towards him. Okay, now it's, what put you on the run from God? Is that you didn't want to surrender because it was like, you know, you, you on one side, man, you got all the fame, all the women, you know, uh, scholarships, everything. But at the other, other, other end, it's like <laughs> if I surrender to God, you know, were you thinking like, man, I'm not going to be able to indulge the same way, you know, into the partying lifestyle? Was that one thing that was inhibiting you from surrendering to God? Or and what are some things that, you know, inhibited you from just totally surrendering to God at that point? Because like you said, you said you knew who Christ was. You knew he was he was your Lord and Savior, but you hadn't fully surrendered to your Lord and Savior. And a lot of people are at that point right now. You know, in, in just different stages of life in the career yeah. where they yeah. don't want to fully surrender. Because I always say when God tells us to put something down, he always got something better for us to pick up. But that's easier said than done. No, that's right. Yeah, I, I think you're you're pretty accurate in 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 my experience. And my experience was yes, and all of that that you said. Um, once I started to open the door <clears throat> for all these things to happen, like once you start to open the door to having sexual relationships outside of Jesus, outside of marriage, um, once you start to open the door to, um, looking at other things as being more important than your relationship with Christ is, um, I began to get imprisoned to those things, if that makes mm. sense. Like I began to um, become open to those things. Like I'll give you an example. Like when I accepted Jesus, man, I knew full well what Christ had for me as far as sex outside of marriage. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, once I opened that door 
and allowed that to happen outside of marriage, then I began to move in that direction and that became more of a foothold for me. And that became more of something that uh, really kind of imprisoned me, if, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happened with, with me with that was um, I started to immerse my life into chasing women. I started to immerse my life into football. I started to immerse my life into other things outside of Christ. Um, running away from it because I felt guilty and I felt shameful for what my life was becoming because I knew better because Jesus had showed me. And the Holy Spirit was convicting you, huh? The Holy Spirit was convicting. Spirit was convicting me the whole time. So, when you, when you, and this is confirmation of when you know you're saved. Like there's a conviction, right, right. Like you, you're convicted. And so I was constantly being convicted about my life, about how I was living, what I was doing. But you have to do something with that conviction. Either that moves you to repentance. Or it moves you further and deeper into mm. sin. And so mm. that's what happened with me is I moved further and deeper into sin. Mm -hmm. And so as I move further and deeper into sin, guess what happens? For a period, the thing you're doing feels good for a moment. But you get more and more depressed. Mm. More and more anxiety filled. Until you go deeper and deeper enough until you're tempted to get so deep into it that you lose a sense of the Holy Spirit. Like as time goes. A reprobate, what they call yeah, that, a reprobate. Yeah, yeah. Like they talk about mindset. Enemy yeah. wants to get us that. Yeah. Yeah. Your mind starts to become depraved. Your mind starts to become reprobate. You start to open up your ideas of what you will do. And, and, you would think you would not do certain things, but you'll end up doing certain things and you'd be like, man, what the heck is going and, on? And, here? and all that, yeah, all that brought you to that night where you're about to take your life. I guess the buildup of everything. Actually, actually you're like, I'm would, just going to end it. I, I, actually, I would say that that part even continued after that night that I wanted to end it. Because after I tried to end it, it wasn't successful. And I started thinking about it. I was like, man, I ain't trying to do all that. You know, I, I don't think. What do you think about the afterlife, though? Because you know about hell, right? Afterwards, yeah. afterwards yeah. I was just like, I was just like, okay, that didn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know but, I mean? but I'm saying at that point, as a believer, you know, we think about hell. And I'm not saying people that commit suicide, everybody that commits suicide is going to hell. Right, did, that, right. did that cross your mind or did the enemy just totally make you oblivious to, you know, the consequences that could have been waiting for you? I was, I, was I was totally oblivious to that piece. I was not thinking in that term. So you weren't sober minded. That's why Bible says be sober minded because no, because right. yeah. had I been if you think about had I been sober minded, that would have been a breaking point to repentance. At right. that time, and when we talk oh, about yeah. sober, we're not we're not just talking about you know uh, not drinking alcohol because the enemy. Yes, yeah. you can get you you can get intoxicated through negative thoughts, through lustful thoughts that can intoxicate right. you. Because remember, we were talking about that before that um, you, when you think of lust, when people when people get into a lustful thought, it actually produces within the neurotransmitters dopamine. Right. And serotonin, which is the same chemicals that are released when people drink. So yeah. a lot of people think of, you know, when the Bible says, well, be sober minded. People say, well, I'm, I'm cool. I don't drink. No, you we we do drink. You know, a lot of times we drink through our thoughts. Yes. Yes. So and, I, and that's what and, and, and that's that's what I was being 
drunk with is right. is my thoughts mm. but also uh i was drinking the kool-aid of just like i remember saying in my spirit like man i can't do this i just mm. give up mm. so i just said i was gonna give up on life mm. And so what what that meant to me was like, man, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. I'm just right. going to live life and whatever the result is going to be, I'm just going to roll the dice and just going to do it. If I'm going to go out, I'm just going to go out just doing it. I'm, the, I'm, the enemy, the, the enemy had you intoxicated. The enemy had you intoxicated. All the women, I'm, I'm going to put every effort into playing football, trying to get to the league. I'm going to do everything I think I know to do to just try to just 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 live this life because i was tired mm -hmm. and and what i didn't realize what was happening to me was that i was fighting this battle in my own strength mm. and so i was tired right. I, I i wanted to do right i wanted to be faithful to jesus i just didn't know how mm. so, i didn't know i didn't know what that meant and so that brought about opened myself up to um whatever happened in your traumatic past you know like we talked about or right. whatever your experiences are it opens you up for that it opens you for the enemy to just wreak havoc it opens you up so, to so much because i didn't know what the next steps were when i became a believer i didn't know how to fight the fight i didn't know how to walk in power i didn't know how to walk in strength i didn't know how to walk in the power of the holy spirit and so i opened myself up for all these things and then i got to the point where i got so defeated and things got so heavy that i was just like man forget it like instead of giving up in the way where i was going to take my life because i was like that ain't a good option i ain't trying to do that you know what i mean i already tried it, it didn't work but then that scared me enough to be like, okay, I ain't trying to die. I just right. want the pain to go, right? Like, I want the pain to go. That's all I wanted. And now, let's talk about the turn of events that brought you back on that right path. Did okay. God send you somebody? Did you hear a voice? Did you hear a dream? You know, um, a message at on, on a Sunday service? What directed you back that compelled you to get back on that righteous path? I think the one thing that uh really had an impact on my life and, and it's kind of hard to say one thing because as you're going through things god is infusing right. messages all the time he's, he's not somewhere distant he's not hiding behind the scenes he's not running from me he's there waiting for me to have a heart of repentance Mm -hmm. In the meantime, he's sending me people like I've had multiple people in the Department of Corrections who were believers who I would get messages from. Right. Mm -hmm. Like and on Sunday morning, you're getting messages. Mm -hmm. The few times I was reading during the time I was living out there in the world and doing what I wanted to do, or should I say backslidden in that moment. You know, I still would get in the word here and there, and he was sending messages that way. So messages were, were always being sent and seeds were always being sown. But the one thing that I point to that was an experience that um, was impactful and changing that in my heart was I was on my way to work. And this is when we were working at NRCC. Mm -hmm. I was on my way to work. And uh, and I felt this presence like in my heart, and I was just like, Lord, I, I just want an inkling of the intimacy that David had, I just want some of the relationship that the prophets had. Mm. And you look at some of the prophets like Joseph and David. They had some awesome relationships with Jesus. And I was like, I want to experience that. I want to know you like that. And I'm sitting there crying and praying and asking God, can I have that? And I'm praying for that. 
And at that moment, that kicked off a series of experiences that happened with me that God proved himself so much to me that it started to build the intimacy and start to build my faith. And see, for me, I began to learn intimacy because I began to learn who God was. You know what I mean? Like, I always view God as like this distant father, but he's man, he's demanding and he's a taskmaster. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like if, if I do this or if I do that, he's just waiting there to snuff God me out. God's sitting there with a big fly swatter. Yeah, he's just wet. Fly swatter just ra waiting to just, right. just chastise me. us. Chastise me. And so that was my idea. And so my identity with my relationship with Jesus was a fearful one. Mm. So that's where I go back to like having to try to live perfectly. And when you know you can't live perfectly. Well, you do. You run and hide because you're yeah. you're afraid you're you're afraid that your father's gonna whoop you. Yeah, you know that balance, and, and it's interesting because we can get off balance because you know the Bible does say the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom, but Absolutely. you also have the love of God. But you also have to have that love of God. So what you're saying is that you had an offset, off balance of the an overload of the fear Absolutely. of God and. You didn't really have Overload. that understanding of the love of God to balance that out. I did not have an understanding of his love. And to keep it real is we do do that. We either go to one side or the other. Mm -hmm. it, either he's so loving that he's never going to punish me for my sin, so I'm going to keep sinning. Right. Or I'm in the midst of my sin. Oh, he can't forgive me or he can't. You know what I mean? He's just mm -hmm. waiting for me to just just mess up so he could just take me out. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn the balance of what fear is. Fear for the Lord is not only having that understanding that he's the all-powerful, omnipresent, omniscient God, but also it's a reverence that we have because of who he is. Right. It's it's almost like like I think of I think of it how I think about my relationship with my with my wife. And for those who don't know, my wife was the one who gave me a kidney when I had a kidney oh, transplant. God, man. Powerful. And so wow. she was the one who did that. Mm. And when I think about her willingness to do that and her love for me to do that, and then I think about all the things that we've been through as we walk through life together. I get appreciative of my wife. Mm -hmm. I have this profound love for my wife. And so it's an awe love that I have towards my wife because I'm in awe of my wife. Well, mm -hmm. that's what God wants from us is that same reverence and awe. And that reverence and awe drives it's like gas to our relationship with him. And that's what helps us to have that awe and that fear when we start to recognize who God is in his totality, mm -hmm. in his powerfulness and who he is, but also in his love and his mercy and his grace of who he is. And when he started to develop that in me, you know, I began to understand that, wow, this is this is the relationship that God is getting, he's actually answering my prayer. And it started from that car drive to work. Is that what you're saying? Started with the car drive to work because that was the heart posture that he needed me to be in a humble state or a humble spirit, right? But soon after that, he began to teach me through experiences. And the experiences were not pleasant experiences, right? Like, that that day that I prayed that prayer, you would think that's like a uh, a wonderful thing, right? Like, man, yeah, that sounds like a wonderful prayer, man. That that you know that that's, yeah. oh, you want to be you want to be closer, you want to be intimate, you want to know the love of David, right? right? As soon as I got to work, I was under investigation, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> For something yeah, I did not do. Yep. 
for something I did not do. <laughs> and and it seemed like every time I prayed that that's prayer, a whole nother, that's a whole nother podcast. Bro, that's a whole nother podcast. We won't go down there, but but I can share my stories too. <laughs> bro, yeah. and, and it just seemed like every time I had that hard posture of humility and humbleness towards him as far as intimacy, something crazy would happen. And I was just, it got to the point, it was a joke with me and my wife. She would be like, man, you got to stop praying them prayers. But you know what the Bible says? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But he but delivers the Lord them delivers them us out of them all. You know, I remember that. That's one thing that would keep me encouraged as I went through those, you know, similar afflictions. And But, that, but that's the point is that's what God want, wanted to teach me. Right, is that I will deliver you from them all. And what's Romans eight twenty eight says? All things work to the good together of the good them and call to him. his purpose. Yeah, those but, are the ones you gotta, you know, keep but, on repeat. But, <laughs> but think about it. Like he says, I will deliver you from them all. You know yeah. what that means? All. I like the way I like the way you pronounce all, all. all. But it also means like. The very thing I was asking for intimacy, because That's he right. said, I will never leave you. Mm. If I'm a deliverer from you all, that means I'm walking with you through it mm. all. He's Jehovah oh. Shemaiah, the Lord, our companion. I am with you. That's right. Jehovah so, Shemaiah. That's the prayer I was asking for. But at the time, I didn't understand. I, I looked at it from a human element. Man, why I got to keep going through this, man? I want some peace. Mm. I want I want heaven here on earth. but I didn't have the understanding yet to understand that on earth it isn't heaven. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. You know what I mean? So like, Don, how did you how you how you construct a routine to stay disciplined with what God was feeding you? Cuz he was giving you a plan. You know, Proverbs 16:3 says commit your work to the Lord, he will establish your thoughts. So it, it appears here he was definitely establishing your thoughts. Oh but yeah. How did sure. you create that into a lifestyle, a routine, you know, uh, so other our audience can, you know, make that applicable in their lives because obviously yeah. it's worked very well for you and still Continu is. continually to put a pl put myself in a place to hear him. I was in the car by myself with him, so I had to put myself in spaces where mm. we were alone. My own devotional time with him, my own solitary time with him. Um. The Lord speaks to us how? Through his word. The mm -hmm. Lord speaks to us through the Holy Spirit, right? So yeah. we have to pay attention to what's going on inside of us. The Lord speaks to us through other people. You got to be around other believers, other believers, right? That's but you, right. you want to make sure that you're in a healthy church, but you want to be around other believers, right? Mm -hmm. And he speaks through circumstances. We want to pay attention to what's going on around us. So for me to build that, you know, I had to make sure I had some devotional time where I was spending time with him alone. I also had to get into his word, you know, because like I explained earlier, I didn't know what my identity was. Mm. So how am I going to find out the identity? I need to go read and hear about what God says about who he is. Was it you know? 2 Corinthians 5, 17? It said we're, we're a new creation. We're a new creation. Christ. Yeah, in Christ. Yes. And he also explains and says that we're a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. We're a holy nation. We're peculiar people. We're special. Right. In other words, to me, what that means to me, like, I'm special to God. That's right. I mean something to God. Before, I didn't feel like that, right? Mm -hmm. I did not feel like, I didn't feel special. Right. I didn't feel anything about who I was. I didn't have that kind of identity. You know what I mean? Right. Like I didn't have that infusion of self-worth when I was coming up. I, I I was trying to figure out life on my own. Mm. You know what I mean? And so a lot of times when we try to figure life out on our own, you're going to reap the results of whatever you're doing to try to figure it out. You know what I mean? Now, and Don, so, those are some good nuggets. But in a nutshell, what would your curative, your biblical curative be? For someone that is battling depression, maybe in battling uh, suicidal ideations, in a nutshell, 
you know, and you being a counselor, but we're both counselors at Department of Corrections, you know, what would be your application, your prescription, you know, just and, and just simplify it. What what would they need to do? Like I say, if you had to say that in just two minutes, what would you say? Man. Man, first of all, um, especially for, for us who are believers, um, in Second Corinthians, it talks about taking thoughts captive. Mm. Our thoughts should not just be running wild like wild horses in pasture. It, 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 our, we, we are to take our thoughts captive because they're, by doing that, because we have the power of the Holy Spirit within us, that power that's the power of all powers, right? Mm -hmm. Like when we take our thoughts captive, we allow the Holy Spirit to go to work and to do work on the stronghold. Mm. Like a lot of our stronghold starts in our mind, like the thoughts of how we believe who we are. Like so I told a stronghold is like a thought process, like a repetitive thought process, a yes, negative it, th a repetitive thought process. Yes, you know, it is a stronghold. That's good. It's it, it's a stronghold because before we do anything our heart and mind are doing work. You know what I mean? And depending on what mm -hmm. we allow in our heart and mind will determine what's going to come out. Right? Like, so. So we got to safeguard our mind. We got to safeguard our mind, huh? And our ears. <laughs> and our ears and our eyes and what we say. So what you does that what look mean? like to safeguard your ears and your mind? Like, what is that? To safeguard, to safeguard your mind is what you allow your mind to meditate on, like mm. the thoughts you allow to come in there, like self-defeating thoughts, like suicidal thoughts. You mm. know what I mean? And sometimes what precedes the suicidal thoughts is depressive thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thoughts about like, I've known people mm. and I've, I've said this myself, man, you ain't nothing. I'm telling mm. myself I ain't nothing, right? Mm. Man, you can't never get it right, right? Mm. Like. Man, self talk, you felt, you negative self talk, it. negative yeah. self talk. The things you tell yourself about yourself and who you are. And you, you know, know, I found out a lot of people get this negative self talk from the music. You know, because I remember we had this uh, one inmate, and he was just he'd always say, "I'm gonna get rich or die trying." It came from a song. Yeah, no, that's right. He'd always sing, and he had the artist. I think that was fifty cent. wall in the cell. I think that was fifty know? cent. Yeah, I think I believe it was 50 cent. And you know what? This individual with a pro agent came in three weeks after he got released. No, a few months after we got released. Yeah. And, and told us that he had got killed trying to get rich over there in San Francisco yeah. on uh, Market Street. I guess he was, you know, selling drugs and was just cruising down the strip. And a gunman came up and just shot him all up. And he was in this, you know, nice Escalade and. You know, like I said, he he was basically just came up in that neighborhood very quickly after he got released. Yeah, but he, he, that that was basically his prophecy. That those that was um, a self talk became a demonic prophecy for him. So that's good no, that's that you right. say that. So yeah, when we safeguard, we got to watch the entertainment uh, that we watch, and not only what we watch, but what we listen to. Yeah. And even so, the people were around because the Bible says bad company. Yeah. What was it say? Uh, ruins good morals. No, that's right. And, and, and the other thing to tap in a little bit more on, on the hearing is like, you know, I remember when um, when I was on dialysis and uh, I would tell everybody my story, you know, yeah, I'm on dialysis or whatever. And everybody would want to try to relate to the fact of the pain of, of what I was going through. And their hearts were right in trying to relate. But the method of what they were saying didn't help me at all. Because they mm. always wanted to tell me a story of somebody who died or or mm. they wanted to tell me the difficult story of, of what happened to someone who was on dialysis, right? Wow. Like, I wasn't even trying to hear all that. You know, I'm on dialysis. <laughs> Man, you're gonna, tell me, about a, you're gonna tell me about a, oh, I had an uncle who was on dialysis, and uh, and yeah, he died. Dope comforters, some yeah. dope comforters. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and so what I'm saying is that had I didn't like protect my ears from that, 
I would have opened the door for possibly death for me mm. because I would have had a heart that was a defeatist heart. My heart was not defeatist when I was on dialysis. The Holy Spirit worked and gave me strength to walk through that. God gave me strength to walk through that. And it's because he gave me a mind that was focused on him. Well, give me right? some word. Give me some word uh, scriptures that you meditated on when you were going through that trial. Brother, when I was going through that trial, do not grow weary in doing good for in due time. You'll reap a harvest if you don't give up. Mm. Cast your anxieties on him mm. because he First loves Peter 5, 7. He cares about it. Right? right? He cares about it. Lord didn't give you a spirit of peace. Fear. I mean, if, you didn't give a spirit of fear. Spirit of fear, fear but, yeah. or spirit of peace, love, and you know what I mean? He gave right. me that. And Praise so God. he gave me several scriptures that I can meditate. He's always given me something that I could just like walk in. And what did that do for you? What did that do for you when you would, because, you know, the Bible says in John 6, Jesus said, my words are alive. Yes. So when you, it's, it's, it's not just like a regular book that we're quoting out of. It's um, not. It's not word. a regular so book. You, the word of God yeah. is alive and active and powerful. The Bible talks about the Holy Spirit guiding us into all truth. Mm. But we got to have some truth in us. That's good. That we're digesting so the right. Holy Spirit can guide us through it. That's right. You know what I mean? Like we got to have something for the Holy Spirit to work with. So, That's right. you know, I had to start digesting and getting into the word. So the Holy Spirit has something to guide me in and speak to me about. Like one of my other favorite scriptures is that the word of God is like a light to my feet. Was it a lamp to my feet and a light to my path? That's right. Which says that his word directs me. It guides me. Just like the Holy Spirit does what? Direct me and guide me. But I got to have both of them existed mm -hmm. so they can work together to kind of help me. And so mm -hmm. you're right. Like the word of God is active. It's like a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's active. Even four twelve. That's right. It works. It mm. does the work. We just have to put ourselves in front of it, mm. right? And and the thing about it is, it may start out as feeling like it's like a, a religious act, right? But if your heart is, is desiring it in the right place, that religious act becomes something that's genuine and true. You know, it's like priming oil. You know, you keep priming, and then all of a sudden, you, you ain't getting nothing. All of a sudden, it, it comes up. That's it kind of like how we gotta up. do it. We gotta. It by faith, we just gotta be there at first. And it start. felt, it felt right. rigid. It felt rigid. That's how and praise I'm, and worship is sometimes. I'm, you, I'm, you're I'm always trying to to be like aware of of rituals and rigidness because we have to because that's right. God. Jesus was checking the Pharisees and the Sadducees because of that reason. Right. So we have to always watch whether we become legalistic, ritualistic, you know what I mean? To the point right. where our heart is not in it. In it. So, right. cause right. God wants a genuine heart, but right. there is, there is an active um, intentionalness that we have to do to put That's ourselves good. in front of the word of God. And to keep it real, you know, some days are more struggles than the other. You're right. You know what I mean? It's not like always every time you go in there, you, you're like getting this like, oh, you know what I mean? It's like it, it doesn't happen like that. You know what I mean? It, it's just like you have to be intentional about all of it. It's like the same intention that we have in the word of God is the same intention that we have to fight when we're going through extreme trials and difficulties. It's you know, the with, Bible says to enter his gates with thanksgiving. And his courts with praise. Yes. And it's like the Lord reminds me that every day, you know, even on a, a prayer walk I did today, you're about to start getting out all my petitions. Lord says, enter my gates with yes. thanksgiving. And my, no, and, right. and my courts with praise, Psalms 100. So that you're right. And sometimes you might not be feeling like it because you got all this stuff going uh, on in your life. But man, there's something about when you start thanking God after a while. First, you're just, okay, thank you, God, for being alive. Thank you for waking me up. But then after a while, as you keep saying it, it starts registering within your spirit. 
No, that's right. It's, and then you it's, get it's, that joy, that peace, that that confidence. And that's why I like the way you said that. In, in, you have to have that intention. Sometimes you just got to have that intention just to, to do it. And it might feel religious, but that's okay. Yeah. Because when you think about religious, that just means habitual basically you habitual. Know what I'm yeah a, a yeah routine. and and so think, you know i think we constantly have to talk through stuff right and i have to talk through like when we talk about like religious mm -hmm. like and what i mean by it is that like you can have religious acts right but you need to have it with the right intention heart that's good that's and good. that's and, it, and that's fine that's a lot right. of times we have religious acts and we either have the wrong motives or our heart's not in it. Right. You know what I mean? And we're just doing religious acts because we're trying to please people. Mm -hmm. We do religious acts for a lot of things. We're trying to get some kind of self-worth from right. what we do. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're, we're all that, you know what I mean? So it's <laughs> like, it's like it, it, I'm I'm learning when God is moving me in my heart that everything needs to be heart driven, and what I mean by that, it's not like like everything's like oh, it's all lovey dovey all the time. And I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that God wants us to have a right heart. That's right. That's right. You know, even when we fail, Ray. He wants us to have a right heart because we're not going to be perfect. So when I fail, my heart posture about my failure should be right. Even now that's good, man. That's good. And, and that's kind of like a weird, like almost seems contradictory, but it's not. It's not. It, it really isn't. It's like even when we fail, even when we commit a sin, our heart posture should be as such that we respond to even our sin the right way. No, you know, that's good because God says, you know, God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I have to ask the Lord because sometimes, you know, we can get wrong intentions, uh, wrong motives, you know, wrong hidden agendas in our heart as we go before the Lord. Because sometimes yes, we can. I find myself going to praise God because I want something. And, and, and of course, we do want something, but that shouldn't be my intent. To worship him. I worship him because of who he is. He's a mm -hmm. loving God. He's a faithful God. He loved us first, right? Yeah. He loved us first. So it, it's like I say a lot of times I have to ask the Lord, Lord, clear out every foul intention deep within my heart if it's there. Yeah. Or any wrong motive. Yeah. You know, any wrong agenda I got hit in my heart. Because sometimes we can cover it up. We can lie to ourselves. Yeah. And, and, and we have to ask the Lord to uproot that before we come to him because we come to him in the spirit. We got to come to him in truth. No, that's right. And then I'm going to add even more to it because like the Holy Spirit will give me something, but I also got to act upon it. Mm. Like, right. Like, like if I have unforgiveness against somebody. Right. And the Holy Spirit is showing it to me and the Holy Spirit is showing me what I can do as a next step to kind of help heal that situation, but I do nothing about it, then, you know, I'm going to be held accountable for that. That's right. That's right. You know what I mean? And so it's like God showed God, uh, if we would just sit still for a moment and we would find those, the, like we were talking about the things that you can do to kind of help yourself walk through this life and walk this journey out. One being like get into the word of God, the other being being in solitary moments with Jesus. You said Psalms 46 10. What does Psalms 46 10 say? Be still. Be still. I like the way you said that. You, you talk about, you know, we got to be still. Be still and know that I'm God. Because you're Man. right. When we start thinking, he said he'll establish our thoughts. Proverbs 16 3. So that was good. I like. We have to be by our, we have to be with him alone. There it is. So we can hear him. Before the word of God or in meditation of God's word, like being willing to hear, like in those moments that I was willing to just sit before him and hear him, he's made some transformative um, heart transformation 
things happen for me by sitting in front of him where it's quiet so he could challenge me on like i'll give you a scripture that he challenged me on and it said to love the lord with all your heart all your soul all your mind and all your strength mm. and, I was like, and i was like lord I, how do you even do that like i'm human how do i do that right um because that that's that that's that's a big challenge it is and what he showed me was that first you have to be in surrender mode because you got to be able to walk by the spirit and he will show me how to love. God will show us everything that we need to know. in I think it's second Peter first chapter where it says, and I think it's the third verse. It said, God has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him. Mm. So he's going to give us everything we need to be able to navigate, walk this journey out. He promises that. Now, now, Don, when you say hear, see, a lot of people think, well, I've tried to hear God. I don't hear a voice. But when we talk about hear spiritually, we're talking about, like says, a lot of times we could just hear it through the word of God, through our thoughts. God speaks to us. Yes. You know, like I said, by establishing our thoughts. Like you said, you, you said earlier, God speaks to us through his word, you know, through other people. Yep. So Sorry, when you're man. still, you can, it registers that, you know, yeah. and that, that's kind of like, you know, how, how we, when we talk about spiritually hearing from him, it just registers. We just know that we know that we know yes. that's from God. Yes. Well, you gotta, you gotta know, or at least have read the word of God to know his voice too. You right. gotta know, that's you gotta right. know, you gotta know who God is. You gotta know there what is. his character is. You got to know what his character is. You got to know how he responds. You got to know how he sees us, how he sees other people, who he who he testifies himself to be. Right. Once you begin to understand all those things, then we'll be able to identify the voice that we're hearing. Right. Like a lot of people are confused about what they're hearing and what's going on because it's not matching up with God's word. It's like a whole bunch of stuff that you're hearing. Like we're hearing, we're hearing a whole bunch of rhetoric in our politics. We're hearing a whole bunch of rhetoric on Instagram. Mm -hmm. We go to work and we hear a whole bunch of gossip. We hear mm -hmm. all different ideologies and beliefs and all that stuff. But if you don't have the word of God to kind of balance it all, man, you'll be all over the place, even as a believer. That's right. Now, going back to that curative for depression, which one thing you said was that um, you got to safeguard your mind. You got to cast down, pulling down those strongholds, those oh, that's negative right. thought patterns. So, and, and what you're saying is getting into the word. So once you get that negative thought pattern, that stronghold pulled down, you replace it with a, a, a new pillar, a stronghold of God's word. That yeah. Is, that stays within that, that mindset. I think in Philippians, it talks about, Set your things on whatever is lovely, whatever pure. You know, I have right. I have that open right here. If you don't mind, I yeah. I'd like to. Yeah. See, that's the Holy Spirit right there. Yeah. But let me let me go here. I think it's four yeah, it's seven seven six. eight four six. eight four six four eight. Let's start with six. Okay. Well, Philippians four six through eight. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. We talk about that. We go back into Thanksgiving. Let your quest be known unto God. And the peace, and that's what we all want, especially yeah. like I said, you're going through a trial, tribulation, and the peace of God, which, and you were talking about this earlier, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And here's what you're talking about, Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, means positive things. Mm -hmm. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think. I'll say again, think 
on these things. Absolutely. That's Philippians 4, 6 through 8. That's a good scripture. Like I said, if you're starting that uh, prescription, you know, for someone's depression, start with Philippians 4, 6 through 8 and apply it. And the Bible says Joshua 1 8, Joshua 1 and 8, meditate on the word of God day and night. Yeah, be careful to do what it says. That's a, a lot of times what people leave out. Do what it says, and what you shall says. have good success. No, that's right. You know, and, and and it's funny in in Philippians. I think you're started with you started with the sixth verse, right? Yes. So, you know, we start talking about prescriptions, right? Like protecting our minds and our thoughts, like and what that looks in real time for us is is what you were just talking about was like meditating on the good, right? Right. Well, what precedes that in that verse was prayer, mm -hmm. like praying, not only with Thanksgiving and petitions, but communicating with Christ, opening our hearts to Christ so that we can experience the peace. Mm. Right. That's how we're going to get peace, because it says we'll get peace surpa that surpasses all understanding mm. through our prayer life. You know, that's a part of one other part and facet of what we can establish to kind of help us with the depression as well is that's having right. that healthy prayer life and communicating with Christ. Because, you peace know, will we, dissipate that depression like peace that. Will dissipate the depression. And oftentimes when we match the word of God with our prayer life. Because as we know the word of God, the Holy Spirit gives us the word of God to pray with, right? That's like, right. like oftentimes I'll be praying and I'll be like, Lord, you just told me I need to love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind and all my strength. And Father, I don't even know how to do that. Mm. And Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I will walk you through that. Mm. I, I will teach you how to do that. And the Bible talks about how God will teach us his That's way, right? Right? Right. Like, right. Like he said that he gave us the Holy Spirit because he will take out our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. That's right. And I will cause you to know my statutes. Mm, that's good. Right? Like the Holy Spirit is there with us to help us through the process of depression, to help us through the process of sin, to help us through the sin of pride, no matter what it is, God has given us a prescription that works for us. And the doctor is the Holy Spirit. That's right. You know, Isaiah 26, three says perfect peace are those that keep their mind, mind stayed on him. mind, your mind on him, on God. Yeah. Now, how we keep our mind on God. You know, the Bible says it was in, in, in John, it says, in the beginning was a word and the word was God. So God is his word. So one way we keep our mind on God is by getting into his word. What yes. you were saying, getting into yes. his word, meditating on his word day and night. Does that mean just reading all day and night? No, get flashcards, get yeah. um, notes, but just say, recite it in your heart just throughout the day as you meditate. On them day and night, and do what it says. That's the most important thing. Do what it says. Meditate on. Do what it says. And the Bible says you shall have good success. Yeah. And I tell people that was Joshua one eight one and eight is the best success speech ever written, the yeah. shortest and the best. Joshua yeah. one and eight. If you just yeah. meditate on the Word of God, now I'll tell day you, and night, you gonna have good success. That's that's you it. Will. It's as simple as that. You will. And you obey will. it. Obey it. Yeah. Meditate and, and, on it and obey it. And for people who don't know it or understand meditation, it's not like like some people think of, OK, you're going into the mountains and <laughs> you're just going to sit there in some quiet place and you just go, oh, right. man, you're going to do all that. No, we ain't right. talking about that. We're just talking about con just taking the time to consider and have thought and chomp on what the word of God is saying. Yeah. Think about it. That's meditation is just pray about it. You know, thinking about what the word of God is saying, what it means means to you and me, and how can I carry it out? It's just taking thought. That's just right. taking the time to sit there and just think about 
No, that's what good. Is- that's good. That's good. Because, you know, like, for example, First Peter 2.24 says, by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. So I would just say to meditate on it, okay, by Jesus' stripes. What does that mean? By his stripes. Okay, that means the whips he got on his back. Mm-hmm. Okay, he took that pain, took those stripes so I could be healed. So by Jesus' stripes, because he suffered for me, thank you, Jesus, mm-hmm. I am healed. And we can I do that healed. through all the scriptures. So we meditate on, take you know, word healed. by word, slowly, repetitively, attentively, yeah, over and over and over until it gets out of our head brain and into our spirit. Yes. See, the more you meditate on it, because you can throw a whole bunch of word in your head and nothing happens. You don't chew on it. If you don't meditate on it, because the meditation is the chewing process. Yeah. Once you yeah. chew on it, now it starts digesting into our hearts. That's when we speak it. When we speak it from our spirit, that's yeah. when there's power. Because if you speak it from your head, oh, people say, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, just from their head. No, you have to get that word. Yeah, you first get it in your head, but then digest it into yeah. it comes into your spirit, into your heart. Ephesians 3 17 says, By faith, Christ's spirit comes to us within yes. our heart. Yes. You know, and and I was thinking as you were talking about it on meditation, one of the meditations I use even at work, because it was like we had to get creative in how we meditated at work. Like, right. <laughs> That's a whole nother podcast. You're right. A whole nother podcast, but I ain't even go open that one up. But but for me, um, one of the practices I did that helped me, you know, it's funny how God works. Like he puts stuff in your spirit to prepare you for what you're about to go through. Yeah. Right. Like, like he had me in such a heart posture at that moment that I put like scriptures on flashcards in my, my shirt pocket. Mm. And so when I was out on the tier or I was out in the yard and I had a little time, what I would do is I would look at the scripture real quick and I would say it like five times real fast. And then I would try to get it into my mind, Mm -hmm. kind of meditate on it. You know what I mean? That's right. One of them I remember was that will keep you in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on him and constantly trying to put that in my mind, help me to have the right mindset for the battle. You, you know what? That That's part of You know what I mean? It's just on that note. I have a thug exposed.org. I got flashcards, some scripture flashcards that people could download. And that's what I do this morning. I put it on my phone. You know, that you, you just download the, the flashcards for free. And then it just has all, you know, just key scriptures dealing with things that we deal with in life. I mean, all the word of God is good, but we, I do have some key, uh, key scriptures, scriptures yeah. with different areas of life that yeah. has really blessed me <laughs> that I wanted to share <laughs> online through flash that I made into flashcards that yeah. anyone could download them. No, that's right, because that's good, because you you need these key scriptures that God gives you, because God will give them to you. God gives right. you the scriptures. If you're open to it, you spend time with him, you right. put yourself in his presence, he will give you scriptures to help you to deal with whatever you're going through. Right. And, and so that is so true that we need these scriptures to be able to bank on. To be able to to root us and ground us like like yeah that will keep you in perfect peace whose mind and state on him was huge for me mm-hmm. you me know what I mean? because too. i was brother, I was looking for peace isaiah 26 3 for anybody who wants to know brother yeah 26 3 isaiah 26 3 so i say that to say you know for all the people who are out there who are just looking for well how do i deal with this life right like um, we gave you some things like what you can do, like taking thoughts captive and, and protecting your ears and, and getting into the word of God and, and taking some scriptures and being able to hold on 
to some of these scriptures, God will give you everything you need for this life. It's a promise. He will not fall back on his word. He will hold to his word. And one of the, that's one of the scriptures that I always bank on that God will Amen. give me everything I need because of my knowledge of him. Right. Everything means he'll give me everything I need to right. be successful and to right. operate and to deal with sin and to deal with depression and to deal with anxiety and to deal with grief and death and all that stuff. So to encourage people, you know, God will respond in that way. You know, and I like what you said. So we got number one, we got to safeguard our mind, mm -hmm. you know, and, and our hearts and our ears, you know, the ear gates, the eye gates. And then you say, get into the word. And we talked about Joshua 1 8, meditate on the word of God day and night. You're going to have good success. So that's key. And then um, I, I think the third one, what I would say, which helped me and, and another podcast, I'll, I'll share my testimony on overcoming Depression, which happened in the same place, NRCC, by, yeah. by a, a Christian psychologist, helped me with that. Just a casual conversation with them yeah. before going into a group to discuss depression. And I'll talk about that on another podcast. But I think is strategically um, lay, planning your day, strategically planning your day, you yeah. know, uh, who we hang around, association. I remember a mentor told me one time, association brings along similarities yeah. and not just associating with people, but like I said, the music you associate with, the environments you associate with. If you're yeah. hanging around negative people, depressed people, watching depressed programs, listening to music that is negative, you know, what you're going to start doing is you're going to start cultivating that mindset of negativity, which leads to depression. So, you know, we want to make sure we plan our day. Ask the Lord. Like say every day, I kid you not, Proverbs 16, 3, I say, Lord, I need your help planning today. Before I even take out my Apple calendar, I say, Lord, I need you to establish my thoughts. I trust you. What's the Bible saying? Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your paths. Right. That's what we should do before we plan our day. Ask the Lord. Say, Lord, I, me and the kids do that every morning. I say, we, we acknowledge you today, Lord God. Direct our paths. Establish our thoughts. Give us the desires of our heart. What to do and what not to do. That's what I'm. What, is, what he means by Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself with the Lord. He'll give us the desires of our heart. So, you know, I, I think. In, in that, if we, because it's the, the Bible even says, I'm not I forgot what scripture that is, but it says not for us, for man to lead their steps, but for God to lead our steps. Yes. Right. And it says that yeah. in our words. So once we do that, I type it in on my calendar. Like today, this was typed in my calendar to do this yes. podcast with my brother Don. Right. Yeah. Because the enemy always wants to plan your day. So we yeah. got to be proactive and go before the Lord in prayer, in worship, thanksgiving, and then be still, and then ask the Lord. Proverbs 16, 3, Lord, we, we decree his promises. I thank you for your promise. You said, if I commit my work to you, you would establish my thoughts. Then once he starts establishing our thoughts, at that point, we start planning our day. And what's that back at 2 and 2 say? It says what? You get the vision, write it down, keep it plain yeah. so other people can run with it. So yeah. I write it down or I type it down and then I run with it. Because if not, that's where a lot of anxiety comes from when you don't have any type of planning yeah. through the day and anxiety yeah. leads to depression. When you don't have a well-planned day, that could easily lead someone into depression. Ephesians 4 no, says, don't give place to the devil. No, you're, you're absolutely right. You got to have a plan. It's like without a, vi a vision, people perish. You got to have some that's sort right. of plan. And so, mm, I like to say that again. Um, without a so without vision, a vision, people will, people will perish. I can't remember what what. Uh, that's in Proverbs. Yeah, yeah. That's in, we'll without put it up on the vision, screen. People, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll start putting stuff on the screen. But um, we'll put it on the screen in our post. But yeah, you got to have a vision, like you said. But I always looked at it as a big vision. But that's just as simple as a vision for your day. You know that's what right. I mean? You got to have mm. a vision for your day. Are you that's fail? Good. Vision for the day. You got to have a vision for your day and 
for me, I think what works for me, I know a lot of people are different, but what works for me is I have to start my day that way with the momentum of being Christ centered. Like if I don't, when I don't start my day at the, at the, at, at, at having Christ starting it and I just get up and I randomly go do stuff, man, that's yeah. not a good day for me. That same right. with me. That's a chaotic day for me if I do that. And that's just me. I'm not saying that other people can't because right. people have different times and methods that they're able to find time to study the word of God and meditate and do things. So I'm, I'm not trying to be ritualistic and locking people in a box. Right. But for me, what works for me is giving him the first part of my day mm. in the beginning because it seems to set a good tone for me. And so that that's um um number one and you said something that i'm going to start making a more of a concerted effort of thinking about is looking at this day like what are we doing this day lord what do we got to do this day like including the lord in this day instead of me saying what am i going to do this day mm -hmm. like, lord what are we going to do this day what do you need me to do this day what do you desire for me to do this day? And that's all God wants is to be included in our lives. That's right. That's what he wants. That's all he ever wanted was to be included in our lives. Even in the Old Testament, that seems so harsh. That's right. God said that he wants to be our God and he wants us to uh, be his people. That's right. Right. Isn't that that's what right. he said? He said that frequently. Right. That's right. And all he's saying is that. I want to be included in your life. Mm. I want you to love me enough to include me in your life. It's transactional. Mm. It's going to go back and forth. That's we right. are included in each other's lives. That's right. And that's all that God ever wanted from us. Well, that's a, you're right. Because in any relationship, I like what you say, transactional. It has to be that. You know, it has to be two way. Two way. You know? Has That's to be right. two way. Can't be I mean, one. Because, like, say you and your marriage, you, you know, I, I know you and your wife. You one thing that I admire about your marriage is that you guys have that cohesiveness, and that just didn't come overnight. You guys spent time cultivating that. Yes. And it's the same uh, thing with our relationship with Jesus. That's right. That's right. Praise God. Well, yeah, hey, we brother, brother, brother Don, do you mind praying us out? Praying for those that might be battling with depression and yes. like i said we're gonna have some more series on this i want to do a part two of this yeah we'll but, do a part because um, there's yeah. a lot more that we can do especially oh, especially yeah. in the area of depression absolutely um, and yeah. and some practical things that we can do um a little bit more specific that that we can kind of deal with how we deal with depression right so we got number one to safeguard yourself safeguard your soul which is your mind, emotions, and will. Yep. Uh, number two is get into the word. Because a visit with the word is a visit with God because God is his word. Yeah. And number three, let God plan your day. Yeah. Psalms 46.10 says, be still, you know, and know that I'm God. Proverbs 16.3 says, commit your work to the Lord and he'll establish yep. your thoughts. Yep. That's how he planned. And then write it down. Yeah, okay. that's number three. So, uh, brother Don, it, it, you know, appreciate you, man, just being so transparent, sharing your yes, testimony. Sir. And um, yeah, if you could, I know, I, I know, there's an anointing on you, right? There's always anointing on you, but there's a special anointing on you right now uh, during this podcast. We just want if you could just pray us out. <laughs> yep, sure can. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful and thankful for who you are. <clears throat> we're so grateful and thankful for for just all that you do lord um lord we know that you are omnipotent you're all powerful you're omniscient you're all knowing you're omnipresent you're everywhere all at once so there is nothing i mean nothing that is happening to us that we're experiencing that you don't know about that you're not aware of. And Lord, you said that you love us. And you said that you will never leave us or forsake us. 
You said that you will be by our side. You said that you will give us everything we need for life. You said thou will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Lord, you've given us so much to be able to respond to whatever happens in this life. Um, whether it's depression, whether it's suicidal thoughts, whether it's anxiety, whether it's anger issues, whether you lost a loved one, whether it's homosexuality, whether it's um, sexual addiction, no matter what it is, no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, you have given us everything we need to be able to handle it and deal with it. We're so grateful for that, Lord, that you have given us what we need to respond and to live this life here on earth. Lord, help us to keep that in mind as we start to go through things, as the enemy seeks to throw out defeatist type thoughts, as he wants us to become more depressed, or he wants us to believe the lies that he has and the accusations that he says against us. Yes, Lord. Help us to be mindful of your spirit that you're in us, that you've empowered us to be overcomers. Because you said greater is he that is in each of us than he who is in the world. So we're, we're victors already. We've already won. You just want us to walk out this journey and walk out the battles that we have to have to go through in order to strengthen our faith. And to walk it out with you leading us. Lord, we're so grateful and thankful for you. We're thankful for what you're doing, what you promised to do, what you said you will do. I pray for that individual right now who is considering wanting to commit suicide. Who's considering wanting to give up on this life. Who's considering just wanting to just give up on life and just go 100% into living in sin. I pray for their heart right now. I pray for the movement of the Holy Spirit. I pray for the power that is you, Jesus, to touch the hearts of the many who are feeling that way, who are considering that way, and empower them right now through your power of your Holy Spirit Send them the people of God to encourage them. Lord, we're so grateful and thankful for you because you are able. And I'm a living witness for what you've done in my life that you're able. So, Lord, we're thankful. We're grateful. It's in the mighty name of Christ we do pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, until Father, next time. Thank you so much. God bless. All right. There's no name above your name. I wouldn't serve any.